this is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is 5 Minutes on Tech, the June 2017 Apple WWDC event. The WWDC, for those who don't know, is the Worldwide Developer Conference, and it's usually software-focused. New iOS, new Mac OS, that sort of thing. But Apple has taken so, so, so long to update so much of their hardware, well, they finally decided to do it at WWDC, even though, well... It's a software event. So what we have is refreshed MacBook Pros. Indeed, you know, Apple used to refresh them usually twice a year back in the good old days. Uh, bigger refresh every year, minor refresh halfway, usually following Intel's new CPU cycles and sometimes new graphics cycles. So it's been eight, nine months, and we're ready for the 2017 models, which look just like the 2016 models. So the bad news is, if you didn't like dongle hell, if you didn't like the super high prices, if you didn't like the butterfly ultra low travel keyboard, you still have all those. What you do get is going from Intel 6th generation to 7th generation CPUs, which isn't a huge difference. Yes, H.265 decoding will probably be a little bit quicker on KB Lake, the 7th generation. You're still limited to 16 gigs of RAM because Apple is still using low power DDR3 RAM. They don't want to use DDR4 RAM because it uses some more power. It's kind of an iffy excuse. I mean, we see the HP Spectre X360, various Lenovo Ultrabooks using DDR4 and still having good battery life. Be that as it may. Also, the GPUs go from, for the ones that have dedicated GPUs, which would be the 15-inch MacBook Pro, you go from the AMD Radeon 400 series to the 500 series, which looks like about a 5% performance increase. So if you have a 2016, in other words, don't feel so bad about it. By the way, the 13-inch MacBook Pro without touch bar that got $200 cheaper in the United States, $1299, that's because it has a 128-gig SSD. It used to start with a 256-gig SSD. That configuration is still available for the same $1499. Speaking of pricing, in the United States, pricing has stayed the same for all these products. I know they're very expensive. We hope the prices might come down. They didn't. From what I hear in overseas, in Europe, in Japan, in Canada, the prices actually went up. Oh, my. My goodness, Apple. Mm. Oh, by the way, the 12 inch MacBook, instead of being capped at 8 gigs of RAM, is now available with 16. Although mixing that much RAM with a low power, kind of slowish CPU, I don't know how many people that need that, but if you felt like you did, well, that's an option for you now. On the iMac front, finally, the late 2015 model was the last edition of the iMac. Wow, right? So now the 2017 model has Intel KB Lake 7th generation CPUs. You have dedicated graphics, again, AMD, Radeon Pro graphics, but available in the 21 inch. Before, you know, you were stuck with integrated graphics. The 21 inch has a 4K display now. So it's looking pretty nice. Before it was really the, the redheaded stepchild of yeah, not well configured. 27 inch gets updated graphics faster. You can go up to 64 gigs of RAM. Has Thunderbolt 3, two Thunderbolt 3 ports. So yeah, if you're looking at buying an iMac, this is a good time. I, I would say so. I think our video editor is going to pick one of those up. And if you have a lot, a lot of money, there is going to be an iMac Pro. They're getting rid of the trash can Mac Pro. The iMac Pro is going to replace it December of this year, but it starts at about $5,000. It'll be a powerful machine. It won't be modular and upgradable in the way the Mac Pro was and the way a lot of Pro machines are, where you can easily swap the graphics card and do stuff like that. But it's a really pretty black aluminum finish. And finally, the much rumored and often leaked iPad Pro 10.5 inch is a reality. It replaces the 9.7 inch iPad Pro. Apple A10X CPU inside and the 12.9 inch iPad Pro gets updated to that CPU too and gets that P3 wide color gamut display. So that's good. The iPad Pro 12.9 inch was also hitting a year and a half old and I think everybody's going to like a 10 and a half inch versus the discontinued 9.7 inch. But that's the same size physically and eh, about $50 more in terms of money, but smaller bezels. That's how they do that. And that leads into iOS 11, which is going to have some really good new features, particularly for the iPad models and the iPad Pro. They, they got that in mind. The laptop replacement thing that didn't quite happen for a lot of people becomes closer to reality. They finally give us a file manager access to the file system, one of the things that is useful to a lot of people trying to replace a laptop for some uses. Also, multitasking. Now, just like with Mac OS, you got the little launcher bar at the bottom, so it makes multitasking easier. Your most used apps 
tap them. You get different spaces to work in, so multiple desktops like you do with Mac OS. So that's really pretty exciting stuff. I think the OS upgrades are the most exciting thing there for the iPads. Oh, the refresh hardware is good. And of course, Mac OS X is going from Sierra to High Sierra. There's an original name, isn't it? Well, and they've got a couple of improvements there, but honestly, Mac OS has just not really moved forward in the 10 years or so that it's been out. So not a lot going on. Don't expect anything fancy like touch or a revamped UI or anything like that. It's pretty much same old, same old. Lastly, there's the Apple HomePod. What a name. Oh, goodness. So. Everybody's looking at that as a Amazon Echo replacement or competitor, a Google's speak home automation assistant replacement, 350 bucks. Notice that Apple said that this was trying to be a high-end wireless speaker system. This is $350. And at that price, the price is more reasonable and it does sound better than the Amazon Echo, for example, or a Google assistant for your home. There's that. And of course it has Siri too. So there you have it. A whole bunch of new Mac hardware and new Mac OS and iOS software coming this fall. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.